In the 1760s, William, Captain William Whittier rode north of Augusta and saw there was a lot of potential for agricultural production in the land there. So he scooped up a large piece of real estate, built a dam, and set up a grist mill. It was originally called Washington Plantation, but by the time the town was incorporated, it was then known as Mount Vernon. Uh, names are a tribute to America's first president, George Washington, and his famous homestead, Mount Vernon. Washington actually designed much of the mansion himself, and even today, it's still making news. Archaeologists have made a significant discovery in the cellars of Mount Vernon, which could offer new perspectives on the untold stories of the people who kept the plantation running. Walter Morris has the story. Here we are in 2024, sort of trying to understand their stories and their lives through these items. Two relatively small bottles offering a big glimpse into colonial plantation life at the historic Mount Vernon mansion. This is an extraordinary find. Tuesday, News 4 getting a rare behind the scenes look inside of the archaeology lab at George Washington's Mount Vernon after archaeologists made an extremely rare find. These were pri probably intended for the Washington's table. During an ongoing $40 million revitalization project last month, crews finding these two sealed and intact green glass bottles buried in a pit in the mansion cellar. See the little bits mm -hmm. of cherry residue. Researchers say they're characteristic of bottles made in Europe between 1740 and 1750 and were likely buried in a pit forgotten about and paved over in the 1770s. So finding intact 18th century food remains is beyond extraordinary. This has only happened two other times in the Chesapeake region. Both bottles filled with liquid and cherries, pits and stems preserved after hundreds of years. And these experts say they can shed light on the lives and skills of the enslaved people who lived here. But we have to think about whose hands last touched these bottles. And in this instance, these bottles, from beginning to end, the cherries that were picked, the trees that were tended, the cherries being placed in the bottles, the pit being excavated to set the bottles in was all done primarily by enslaved labor here at Mount Vernon. It's no secret Mount Vernon is filled with historic artifacts, touched by people who shaped American history and whose voices have never been heard until now. Thrilling, but it also is sort of humbling. Of course, recovering and preserving such rare artifacts is no small task wrap them up in uh, archival quality foam, put them into secured and padded buckets and actually brought them in. This time lapse shows a small part of the team's painstaking efforts to extract the bottles before eventually emptying the contents. Stabilizing and then coating them to prevent them from you know, being exposed to the moisture in the air and the oxygen that is uh, in the air around us. The Mount Vernon team says the cherries and liquid recovered may also hold answers about the environment at the time and how food was preserved. And that may be the tip of the iceberg. Monday, crews finding another bottle buried in the cellar and they're working to get it out. Basically only the very top is exposed but we can see that there's liquid all the way to the top. Now that these bottles have been emptied and cleaned, they will be sent to another lab for more analysis and hopefully uncover more secrets from the past. Use these bottles to tell a little bit more of the stories of the people um, who were actually preserving the food in these, the work that the enslaved workers at Mount Vernon actually did here. Walter Morris reporting. Now, researchers told the Washington Post that when the bottles were opened, the preserved fruits still actually smelled like cherries. Hard to believe. There was a popular drink, by the way, at the time made with cherries, brandy, spices, sugar, and cherry juice. It was called Cherry Bounce. Apparently, that was usually stored in a larger vessel, so those cherries in that story were likely preserved for something like baking. Keith's